More than 15 states have sued to stop a federal judge from rescinding Title 42, which is the pandemic era policy that stops immigrants from filing for asylum, from even crossing into this country. Uh, they fear it will only exacerbate historically high border crossings by eliminating Title 42 which many blame on Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. I hope you followed all of that, but we're going to go even more detailed for you to help. During a visit to El Paso on Tuesday, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy fired a warning to Mayorkas to resign or be impeached. Secretary Mayorkas does not resign. House Republicans will investigate every order, every action, and every failure will determine whether we can begin impeachment inquiry. And of course, uh, Mayorkas has famously said that the border is secure and becoming more secure. But uh, the Department of Homeland Security did fire back, saying, quote, members of Congress can do better than point the finger at someone else. They should come to the table and work on solutions for our broken system and outdated laws, which have not been overhauled in over 40 years. So somebody's the pot calling the kettle black on both sides of this thing. Uh, for more on this, we're joined by Charles Marino, a former advisor to the Department of Homeland Security and the founder and CEO of Sentinel Security Solutions. Chuck, even the Biden administration, who first worked to rescind the order, who talked about the order saying it, wasn't it shouldn't be allowed, later put Title 42 in place for the same reason as the Trump administration, sending back a number of migrants. How does Title 42 help Border Patrol enforce immigration law? Well, Adrian, to answer your question quickly, it's been used over 2.4 million times, and it hasn't even been used consistently by this administration. So it goes to show that it has been used quite significantly. But what Republicans are fearing here is that with Title 42 going away, that this would be the ultimate pull factor to the United States and that there would no longer be any programs or enforcement of the laws that could really double the, the number of daily uh, immigration violations that we have down at the southwest border. So we're talking about going from seven to 8,000 to more than 16, 17,000 people a day, which would put us well over 13 million additional people on top of the four and a half million that have already come across. Wow. Uh, the 15 Republican yeah. attorneys general who've asked the court to keep Title 42 in place, they say that states need to intervene because the Biden administration has, quote, surrendered in the case. What does that mean? Well, I think it's a true statement. And, you know, you brought up Secretary of Homeland Security, Ali Mayorkas. I think we saw this train coming that if Republicans took over the House, that they were going to ask him to resign uh, more clearly and, and more consistently uh, or, uh, or impeach him. And I think what's happening here is that this is having an effect on all states and will have an effect on all states with respect to crime, with respect to overburdening critical infrastructure. And also in the case in, of Massachusetts, we see they're having to go back to their taxpayers and ask for another $130 million specifically to the illegal migrants that have settled in that area to help support them and provide shelter and food for them. So, you know, this is going to have a big impact here on a lot of people, but you can't look reality in the eye and deny that it's happening. And I think that's the main beef from Republicans uh, with this administration saying, look, the numbers tell the story. This is a huge problem, but it's a false choice, Adrian, for Democrats to say uh, you can either have immigration reform or a secure border. You have to always have that secure border in place. I agree, it's time for immigration reform. Congress should get to work on that. It's essential to solve all of these problems that we're seeing, but that don't take away from the issue. We need a secure border here for our national security, and that one fact needs to be consistent. Do you think that it's fair to blame Mayorkas? I mean, really, they're targeting him individually versus the entire department. I don't, just like I didn't think it was fair to entirely blame the CBP commissioner that was just asked to resign, Chris Magnus. I mean, at some point in time, they are carrying out the policies and the desires of the administration. This is being put forth by the president, by the vice president, and the domestic policy team at the White House. Now, look, at the end of the day, it makes it 
very tough for Ali Mayorkas to do his job because he's leading the largest law enforcement department in the United States. He is the one that needs to look the men and women of CBP in the eye each and every day, their leadership in the eye each and every day. And if you lose credibility in that position, which my sources tell me he has, then it becomes very hard to leave this very large department, not just with CBP, but with other law enforcement agencies in there, like the Secret Service, because they see what's happened with CBP and they say, could that be us in the future on a different issue? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.